Microphone number five, please. Yeah, hi, this is Andrew Parker of the Financial Hello. Times. Um, just wanted to pick up uh, something that the financial analysts have been pointing to this morning. They seem to be, to some extent, disappointed with your um, medium term guidance for devices and services, the, the margin there of 10% or above. Questioning, in other words, if you're going into an alliance with Microsoft, can you cut into your R&D significantly? Can you give any sense of whether there's a big potential for a saving there and, and therefore whether margins can um, improve over time? And then just briefly also, um, talking privately to the mobile operators, particularly in Europe in recent days, they were hoping you were going to announce a big boost uh, to Mego today and that was going to be the mass market alternative to Apple and Android. Um, just interested in what feedback you've got to the idea of uh, tying up with another uh, US technology company. Great. Uh, two good questions. First of all, um, during our investor and strategy briefing this afternoon, we'll give quite a bit more information about how you should think about R&D expenditures. We will actually put up a graph that directionally signals significant changes in the makeup and the absolute levels in R&D expenditures as a result of this relationship. So it is the case that we anticipate being able to substantially reduce R&D expenditures while actually increasing R&D productivity because there are some of those resources and programs that have been less efficient over time and we need to go after that and get it, get it quite focused. So I think the market and, and investors will get quite a bit of reassurance this afternoon when they see some more specific plans in terms of how this affects R&D. With respect to the European operators, um, both Steve and I have been in contact with um, virtually all of the European operators as well as operator uh, leaders in some countries around the world, although the phone calls are still happening at a furious rate, as you can imagine, um, with all of this news. Um, I understand what you said about the hope for a, a broad, <coughs> excuse me, MIGO-based ecosystem. At the same time, I think there was also recognition that for something to effectively compete and ultimately win against Android and Apple, it required some significant muscle, some huge focus in terms of the anchor tenants, recognizing that a broad consortium and general approach around the world, frankly, hasn't been moving fast enough, uh, and multiple attempts at that over the years. So as I presented to each of the European operators, you know, literally in the, the last so many hours and over the last day, also operators in the US and other places, the message that I've heard back is, we understand, we like it, um, we will support it, because of course the operators, more than anything else, more than anything else, they need a credible alternative. And what happened today, and this is, this is one message that's so important to us to deliver, is this is now a three-horse race. And that's what the operators heard. They're anxious to talk to us in more detail. Steve's had similar conversations. I think the best quote I heard from one of the European operators is, thank you, we are all smiles. Microphone number six, please. Uh, Rafe Blanford, uh, all about Symbian. You, uh, I'm sorry, mentioned I'm not seeing where, where you are. There you are. Sorry. OK. Uh, I thought, I'm sorry, what was the question? He's from, he's from all about you Symbian. You mentioned in passing okay. uh, that uh, Windows Phone would be expanding, or and I took that to me into the mid-tier. I wondered if you could shed any details onto how that would happen, you know, especially with some of the relatively strict chassis specifications at the moment. Yeah, so part of the unique relationship here is work that we will do and that Nokia will contribute to this effort to help Windows Phone aggressively and quickly move down the price continuum which means specific work that we have to do to consider different approaches from a technology perspective, from a go-to-market perspective, from a software perspective. We have much of that expertise from the Symbian effort, and we will be contributing that expertise to help Microsoft go down scale. So the effects of Symbian, as you correctly pointed out, are really a function of two things. They're a function of the rate at which Windows Phone comes down the price continuum, and always, always a function of consumer demand, particularly in certain markets at certain price points, there is, there's very good demand, very good growth of Symbian in some markets. Nonetheless, I want to go back to my original statement. Windows Phone is our primary smartphone strategy. And Steve will add to that. Essentially, I think from a Microsoft perspective, you mentioned chassis. You can think about a, a lower end chassis spec that nonetheless preserves the uh, important integrity from an application developer perspective. But that w does require, to get to the kinds of price points we're talking about, collaboration with the silicon vendors, which yeah. we've already That's already had, begun. Uh, those sets of discussions, as well as the hardware software relationship. So it, it's a, let's just put it this way, the Nokia engineers and Steven himself, uh, that was an important thing for us. They pushed us hard and we have 
kind of arranged our priorities so that that fits in the context of what we do here in the, in the very near term. Thank you. Microphone number one, please. Charles Arthur from The Guardian. Does Nokia have any tablet strategy? Um, and, and if so, uh, why, why would you put out a Mego tablet, or a Mego device indeed, that is going to be orphaned at birth? Why would anyone buy it? Why, how is that not just burning money? So I'm, I'm not sure the, the premise on what your question is based as it relates to Amigo tablet or whatever. But let me say this. The, the relationship with Microsoft and our strategy going forward gives us different options for a tablet strategy. Clearly, we could, for example, take advantage of things that Microsoft might be planning for the future as it relates to tablets. That's one option that we could consider, but we have nothing to announce today. And at the same time, as you'll hear more about later today as we talk about our whole strategy, the third pillar of our strategic investments is in future disruptions, future platforms, future devices. And we preserve the right to have an option to introduce tablets using other platforms, other directions, including some things that we may be working on internally. So we have multiple options here, but we do not today have a specific tablet strategy that we're announcing. But who would buy an Amiga, Amiga device that's going to be dead from its birth? Well, you know, I think you're answering your own question. If, if in fact, something is dead, then it's best not to ship it. <laughs> we, we, anything we plan to ship, we will ensure that the appropriate ecosystem and support is there to make it a successful device. Microphone number six, please. Um, Mike Butcher from TechCrunch. You're live on TechCrunch. Um, uh, TechCrunch, uh, hey! Say hi to the fans. Um, uh, well, how would you, uh, Andrew, Andy Rubin of uh, Android famously said that today's smartphone is tomorrow's feature phone. What appears to be the case is that you've effectively sold your company to Microsoft and now it's a Windows world and there's absolutely no incentive whatsoever to develop for Mego anymore or Symbian and it's now all about Windows apps. Is that not the case? So it is the case that our primary strategy is Windows Phone and we will be working hard to ensure that developers around the world are building applications to support that ecosystem. So that's absolutely the case. It's also the case, and you'll hear this again later today, as it relates to the low end, there are elements of smartphone technology that are being introduced at the low end of the pricing continuum. It's absolutely the case that there will be fresh and expanded investment in those, those environments, recognizing the need for us to compete in those, those marketplaces. We have, a time, we have time for a couple more questions. Microphone number three. Yeah, Petrus here from Helsinki, Santa Monica, Finland. Uh, in 2006, it was somewhere in 2006, the former Nokia CEO said that he won't rest before the situation in North America will get better. And since that, the situation in North America for Nokia has been collapsing. And at the moment, we don't have any proof that Windows Phone 7 would be successful in North America. So any idea that how, how this new uh, uh, smartphone strategy would help uh, strengthen Nokia's situation in North America? Thank you. Yeah, I think the criti critical ingredients for um, Nokia's and Microsoft's su success in North America arise out of the, the strategy that we announced today. We have to deliver a complete user experience. Great, iconic hardware. Wonderful operating system environment. Supporting services to create an ecosystem. And if I may say, the support of the operators who see a third ecosystem and are willing to say, that we're going to support. So there's a lot of excitement already. As well, Nokia has had to take steps, some of which will become public during the course of today in terms of new leadership for our North American organization. These types of steps are things that we're taking to ensure an absolute focus on the North American market. As I said in my opening remarks, as part of why we believe this is good for Nokia, is we believe this gives us faster access to the US market with a contemporary offering. Great. Microphone number one, please. I'm uh, Eric Regulli with the Globe and Mail of Canada. Um, oh, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Mr. We've got Finland, we've got Canada, <laughs> we've got... Okay. <laughs> um, my question is this. Uh, Nokia has been accused of being very bureaucratic, very top-heavy with armies and armies of vice presidents. Uh, you've talked about employee reductions. How hard hit are these vice presidents and other senior managers going to get in the new Nokia? We don't have any specific comments on who at what level is going to be hit and so forth. The way to think about it, though, is I'm going to support your point about the, the need to improve the speed and nimbleness and agility of the organization. There's absolutely no ambiguity that we have to take significant steps in how we operate, the things that we do to function effectively. 
And so when I presented earlier this morning to all of the employees at Nokia, I went into some detail about some of the specific changes that we're making internally. Some of them have to do with organization, but the real point is, for example, about the elimination of bureaucratic structures and processes and teams and a variety of things that have been slowing us down. But of course, most importantly to get speed, you've got to have a clear strategy. So in front of 60,000 Nokia employees earlier this morning, we laid out a very clear strategy of the three critical things on which we're going to focus. Again, we'll go into more details later today on those. The things up upon which we're going to focus, how we're going to differentiate, and how we're going to operate differently going forward. If I may add to that, one of the things that's already evolving rapidly at Nokia is a change in attitude and behaviors that we think is important. With a clear strategy, the fighting spirit of Nokia worldwide, and certainly the fighting spirit of the Finnish people, is being brought to bear. There's an opportunity here to tap into that with a clear strategy and move forward like we haven't done in some, some number of years. Uh, we've been pretty vocal and transparent about some of these challenges, and um, I think it's having quite a positive effect. As people say, I'm here to fight, and that's what we're doing. Just, Great. Sorry. One, just one little anecdote. Uh, literally, the first time uh, we talked about the, you know, the fact that Nucky was going to do the strategy evaluation was sometime, I think, in the month of, of November. And Stephen said, we'll make a decision and be moving forward by within a couple of months. I, I mean, I didn't know the yeah. specific day at the time, but within a, a few months. That struck me as um, quick, let's just put it that way. And, and we're here. Uh, and I, I found that quite, quite remarkable uh, as it relates to speed and agility. Good, great. Thank you. Gentlemen, on that note, we're going to close our Q&A. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. This is the end of our press conference, and those who are joining us on, on our webcast, this is the end of our program here this morning. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Just a... Uh,